Kia ora, I'm David Chaston with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This will get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock, with news China is signalling more action is coming from it to punish Australia. But first, the US Fed minutes were released today and all eyes were on tapering signals. The market caution with the risk-off mood has been largely attributed to hesitation ahead of this release. And in fact, these minutes show that they sense a move to tapering is getting closer. Minutes also showed they're seeing progress on the inflation front too. That resulted in an overall signal of two interest rate hikes for 2023, according to the median of their projections, while seven of the 18 wanted to raise interest rates next year, and 13 officials viewed inflation risks were weighted to the upside, up from five in March. Separately, the US booked total vehicle sales in June at an annual rate of 15.4 million, which was a sharp drop from the 17 million annual rate in May. The US is the second largest vehicle market in the world after China, which sold 25.8 million vehicles in the year to date, in the year to June. But despite the current hesitations, both regular analysts and the AI models are indicating that in the US, second quarter 2021 economic growth will be stellar and far north of a 7% annual rate and maybe closer to 8%. In Europe, the European Commission raised its growth and inflation projections quite a lot for the euro area in 2021. They say the euro, euro area is set to expand by 4.8% this year and 4.5% in 2022. In China, their state council seems to be directing their central bank to cut its reserve ratio requirement for banks to spur more economic activity there. It is not unprecedented, but it does indicate that the, at the highest levels they are feeling pressure to act over the slowdown that has been evident in their economy in the past few months. In response to an early patsy question from a local reporter, their foreign ministry spokesperson has warned Australia more trade actions are coming their way and has specifically noted the idea is to hurt Australians as a way to get the message through to Canberra that it's not to be trifled with. It is the people that pay for misguided government policies, they say. But that is not deterring the iron ore trade, nor the iron ore price. US Treasury 10-year yield starts today at 1.32% and down another five basis points extending their retreat. And the price of gold is now at $1,803, which is up $8 from this time yesterday. And oil prices have fallen again today, down by $1.50 a barrel. In the US, they're now just over $71.50 a barrel, while the international Brent price is now just on $73 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar opens today just under 70.2 US cents, and marginally above this time yesterday. Against the Australian dollar, was slightly firmer again at 93.7 Australian cents, and against the euro, was similarly firmer at 59.4 euro cents. That means our trade weight index starts today at just on 73. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston. That was 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.